guys, you're watching Yachts on Wheels. My name is Alexander. We are in Slovenia, the country where Adria manufactures our favorite motorhomes. Today is a wonderful occasion. We are on a testing course where drivers learn to drive their vehicles. People come here to practice in extreme driving conditions, on wet roads, up and down hills, and around turns. It's a great opportunity to train your skills and to get to understand how your vehicle behaves in certain conditions and how you should react in those conditions. Here you can learn to deal with different changes in the situation on the road, and the instructors teach you how to behave behind the wheel and how to get a feel for your vehicle. Why did you decide to create courses for motorhome drivers? Many people buy these vehicles or rent them, for example, to go on vacation, but they don't have the proper experience. After all, motorhomes are much larger and longer than a regular car. Drivers have a lot of questions, which is why we organized these courses. What kind of exercises do drivers do on your track? The first part of our courses is theory, and then we go to practice on the training course where we conduct training on different models of vehicles. We teach drivers how to deal with different vehicles, how to brake properly on different types of surfaces, dry and wet and mixed surfaces, and how to avoid obstacles. For this, we use controlled flooding. Then we teach proper driving maneuvers such as slalom, braking, and of course, in the end, we combine all these different types of exercises and we do them one after another. The first exercise is the slalom. It may seem very simple to you, turn the wheel back and forth and go around the traffic cones, but with a motorhome, it's not quite so simple. On sharp turns, passengers in the back of the motorhome experience discomfort that is unknown to those who are sitting in the cabin. Usually, there are no armrests on the seats in the back, and passengers are not ready to be thrown from side to side. They might be drinking a beer or reading a book, for example. So, when I drove a slalom at a decent speed with some sharp movements of the steering wheel, the instructor had some comments for me. As we all know, the best way to teach is to show a good example. This is what I asked our friend to do. When he did the slalom, it was smooth and comfortable. It's all about finding the correct trajectory of movement and gently turning the wheel. I turned the wheel abruptly, worrying I'd hit a traffic cone, but he did it smoothly, and even though he drove even faster than me, he didn't hit anything. After watching him do it correctly once, I realized my mistake. The next test, or rather mock situation on the road, was sudden braking of a vehicle in front of us. The instructor directed me to drive behind him with a short following distance in the adjacent lane and prepare to react to a sudden stop. The conclusion is, a motorhome is a very heavy vehicle that requires a significant braking distance even on dry roads. From now on, we'll keep more distance. In the next task, we again practiced emergency braking, but now on wet pavement. Here, ABS played an important role. This exercise allows you to feel how your vehicle will slow down on a wet road, what braking distance you will need, and how important it is to increase your following distance while driving on a highway. It turned out that the key was not to be afraid to press the brake pedal. The ABS system will not allow the brake pads to lock the wheels, and ESP keeps the vehicle in its lane. The next stage was the worst. It seemed that if we were driving slightly faster, the motorhome would simply turn over. But even then, the ESP system did its job perfectly. It does not allow the car to make sharp turns that would create a risk of rolling. The motorhome never rolled even in a 90 degree drift. The most difficult task was to get out of a drift and then avoid sudden obstacles. After several attempts, everything fell into place. One of the most dangerous situations is entering a roundabout on a slippery road. There's a risk of running into a ditch or crashing into a car in another lane. The instructor advises to gently turn the steering wheel and slow down trying to stay in your lane, even if you need to come to a full stop. Otherwise, it's the ditch or a collision. Now the final part of the test, emergency braking while driving downhill and avoiding obstacles. It's important to remain calm and not to be afraid to use the brakes. Some might say that it's impossible to slow down in such a situation, but with a motorhome it's a different story. With such a large mass, ABS and ESP, it is necessary to slow down and avoid obstacles without worrying about going into a skid. Otherwise, a collision will be inevitable. 
Several attempts allowed me to understand how such a heavy vehicle behaves in this situation and how to react properly at the wheel. What are the main mistakes drivers make while performing exercises on the course? The biggest problem is the size. Drivers can't properly assess how big these vehicles are. The second common mistake is excessive steering. Another problem is the inability to properly slow down in a critical situation. We teach drivers how to respond to unexpected situations. Braking is the main tool to use when there is an obstacle ahead or when you are driving on a rough road. The first step is always to slow down and only then begin to smoothly turn the steering wheel. Well friends, today was a wonderful sunny day. We had a lovely time driving motorhomes, which were brought over from the Adria plant just yesterday. The vehicles performed impeccably in all the tests. We learned a lot. Uh, thanks to modern ESP, ISR, and ABS systems, we didn't experience any difficulties handling these vehicles while turning. If you follow the trainer's instructions correctly, the car behaves predictably. You can feel safe, but always remember that you are driving quite a large vehicle that weighs almost three tons. But nevertheless, it is equipped with all the security systems that will save you from any undesirable bad situations. These vehicles give you almost all possible comforts, all the necessary equipment, six beds and a very interesting layout in terms of accommodation. Here we have three double beds, a bathroom, and some options that will help you feel comfortable traveling around Russia all year round with their winter package. You've been watching Yachts on Wheels. My name is Alexander. If you like the video, press the thumbs up button, and we will see you again soon. Bye-bye.